what's up Slunts, Joker here. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Witcher 3 PC build. This is going to be, you know, just a gaming ready PC build for the Witcher 3. Uh, you know, after looking at the recommended system requirements and reading what the developers had to say uh, in an interview regarding those system requirements and the performance that you can expect, uh, I kind of came to a consensus on what kind of uh, build someone might need to be running this game at ultra at 60 fps at 1080p if you're looking to run higher resolutions you might require a little bit beefier of a system than the one i'm going to recommend here today um it's kind of hard to say without the game actually being out so some of this is speculation but we're going on the information that we have from the developer and the system requirements that they have released so first off let's go ahead and take a look at the system requirements which i covered uh previously in another video about uh, back in january when they released these um but for the Intel side, they're recommending an Intel Core i7 uh, 3770, but we're going to go with the latest model, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and then AMD, they're recommending an FX 8350. Uh, and then for Team Green on the GPU side, we're looking at a GTX 770. And for Team Red, AMD, we're looking at an R9 290. And then 8 gigabytes of RAM, uh, Windows 7 or 8 64-bit operating system, and 40 gigabytes of hard drive space. So pretty uh beefy specs as far as system requirements are concerned uh and regarding those specs the developer actually came forth in an interview uh with a polish magazine saying that those recommended system requirements were basically for the game at ultra at 30 frames per second not 60 frames per second so if you're looking to run the game at 60 frames per second you're going to need more than what they're recommending if you don't want to turn down any graphics settings if you're like me uh i plan on playing that game you know with the graphic settings completely maxed out uh you know and hopefully getting well above 60 fps i mean that's at least my intention is i have you know i have two 980s um you know if you're if you're new to the channel you're not aware of that i have i just got two 980s so i'm ready for the witcher 3 part of the reason i upgraded was pretty much for the witcher 3 uh because i want this game to just run amazing i don't want there to be any questions or doubts in my mind about that uh, so looking at what the developer had to say, he said, I think we'll stick with 30 FPS. We're not going to stop working on performance until the very end. It's crucial. It's a crucial matter to us. There are no, there are different PCs with different specs. The programmers insisted on avoiding tricking the players by lowering predicted specs. As I mentioned before, it can only get better. So it sounds like, you know, they're saying that, you know, at, at release, at least, at least, uh, they're targeting 30 FPS with the recommended system requirements, but it can get better, you know, over time as drivers, get better and they release patches and updates for the game but i really like the thing he said there about the programmers insisting trying to avoid tricking the players by lowering the system requirements like we have seen with some games uh where they you know basically come out and say oh yeah this is all you need uh and then the game comes out and it just runs like absolute horseshit I'm, the games i'm thinking of in my mind are like watchdogs and assassin's creed unity pretty much ubisoft games uh in a nutshell but CD Projekt Red seems to be on the ball with everything as far as the PC development is concerned. Uh, and that's one of the reasons they are one of my favorite developers. Um, and they're not afraid to speak their minds and be honest and open with the community. So without further ado now, let's go ahead and jump into the builds. All right, so before we go ahead and jump into the internals of my recommended build for The Witcher 3, I wanted to go ahead and take a look at one case. Obviously, you know... A case is going to be very specific to each user. Some people are going to have different tastes. So you should find a computer case that's going to be able to house your components, something that, you know, has good user reviews out there and, you know, good reviews from credible sources like Dimitri Hardware Canucks. Uh, if you want to watch case reviews and just see some good old tech porn, check out Hardware Canucks. They have some of the best case reviews um, out there on the internet and just honest, in-depth, very, very critical. And they will, you know, I've learned a lot about computer cases just from watching uh, Dimitri's case reviews over on Harbor Canucks. Fantastic channel. And the Fantex M3 Pro is one of his case, uh, favorite cases, and I have to agree with him. Um, you know, as far as, you know, water cooling options and just, uh, you know, cable routing, and like they even have the cables on the backside with the Velcro straps, just like I have in my Define R5, but they were like kind of the first ones to really do this. And now other companies are starting to pick up on what Fantex was doing. Uh, and they're doing it all, all of these great, great things that you see in much higher end builds now, but they're doing it at a good price at under a hundred dollars with this case. And it's been at a, under a hundred dollars since the case came out. And it's just, it's fantastic. It has everything you could possibly need for water cooling, uh, full size ATX and cable routing and SSDs, whatever, whatever you want to throw in the system, you're going to be able to do it with the Fantex N3 Pro. And that's the reason I'm recommending as a case. But choose something that's, you know, personal to you and something that you like uh, and hopefully, you know, has good reviews out there as well. 
All right, so now getting down to the nitty-gritty of it, um, CD Projekt Red did recommend a 3770, which is an i7 Intel processor, or an AMD FX8350. So to that end, we're going to look at the latest i7. We're not going to go all the way back to a 3770K. Um, you know, obviously, if you already have an i7, or if, you know, let's just start, if you're starting from scratch, that's basically what this build is for. But if you already have, like, an i7-3770, or, like, a 2600K, then you're going to be, you're going to be just fine. Don't bother upgrading your CPU. Um, chances are you're probably going to wind up just looking at your GPU but this is really you know an all-encompassing system every part we're going to cover here today and to that end we're starting with the 4790k which is $334.99 so pretty hefty price tag uh, for a processor especially for gaming but being that it is an open world game it probably is going to be utilizing those hy the hyper threading uh, technology of an i7 probably going to do a little bit better than an i5 an i5 would probably be okay in most gaming scenarios, but there are some games uh, that are starting to take advantage of hyper-threading, so an i7 might not be that bad of an idea. Uh, and then looking at a motherboard to throw that into, I've landed on the MSI uh, SLI Crate Edition, and that's at $121.99. Uh, really nice black and white aesthetic that, you know, will look nice in the Fantex M2 Pro case, and it's an aesthetic that I'm personally fond of, and seems to actually be picking up in popularity recently. Um, but this is the one, the one I chose because it's got SLI support and it's just a deadly looking board. Uh, and I've had good experiences in the past with MSI using their Z77 M power motherboard. And I had MSI 770s and then 780s. So just an all around great company. Uh, and I was actually going to go with their X99 SLI plus board, uh, but only wound up landing on Asus, um, after hearing some things about some some dodgy BIOS updates and things like that for the X99 SLI Plus, but that was specific to that chipset, to the X99 chipset. Uh, as far as from what I've read about the Z97 board, uh, it's rock solid, not really any issues out there. It's got four and a half stars on Amazon, so looking pretty sharp and just all around good board for a good price, under $200, really can't ask for much more than that. Um, now moving over to the AMD side, they're recommending an FX8350. Um, but if you want to save a few bucks, which is probably what you're looking to do if you are going more towards the AMD side, I would recommend going for the FX8320. The reason being is there's really not that much of a difference between the two processors. And if you're going to be overclocking anyway, uh, you're going to be able to get the pretty much the same performance as the 8350. Out of the box, the 8320 is at 3.5 gigahertz but it has an overdrive which is like their form of intel turbo boost um goes up to 4.0 gigahertz whereas the 8350 is 4.0 out of the box but overdrives to 4.2 gigahertz but it also costs uh you know about was it 35 dollars more something like that yeah about 35 dollars more for the fx8350 so i would recommend saving the money and going with the 8320 and just overclocking it yourself because on paper the 8350 really just looks like a factory overclocked 8320 in my eyes and if it were me i would save the money on the processor and just overclock it myself because otherwise they have the same amount of l2 and l3 cache they've both got eight cores um you know eight physical cores out of the box so really no reason to go for the 8350 in my personal opinion but you know if you want to spend the extra money on the 8350 because you don't want to overclock it yourself uh, then by all means go nuts that's it's your money you could do what you want and then for a motherboard for the amd we're going to go with the asrock fatality 970 performance it's a good solid board it's going to support sli or crossfire has a good amount of features and asrock has really been coming a long way over the past few years um as literally has like three or five years really uh just you know, stepping away from the shadow of, like, people thinking it's like, oh, isn't Azrek just, like, the uh, the budget Asus? Like, no, not really. It's not really the case. Do your research. Go look up Azrock on Wikipedia if you want to uh, find out, you know, the, the real story behind Azrock. Um, but, you know, good board, under $100, so it's going to be cheaper than the Intel build overall. It's obviously the Intel uh, processor was over $300. So if you're looking to save some money, the AMD build, you know, if 8320 at 145 and then the board at $96, so you're looking at around $250, bucks. bing, bang, boom, out the door, motherboard and processor sorted. And you're going to want to spending more than that just on the processor, an extra $100 more just on the processor if you go Intel. And the difference in gaming is not going to be that much. I like Intel processors because I have a very heavy workload. I do videos. I have, you know, serious workflow when I'm working on multiple monitors and stuff like that. So... I kind of need Intel for my needs because I need that single threaded performance. But if you're looking to do gaming, then there's really no reason for you to go out and spend the extra like two, three hundred dollars it's going to wind up costing you for the motherboard and the CPU and everything all together uh, at the end of the day when compared to the AMD side. If you're looking to just really game and not do like heavy content creation and stuff like that.
All right, so now coming over to the graphics cards for the build. Yes, I did say cards because if you looked at the specs, they said, you know, 30 FPS at Ultra with a 770 or an R9 290. So that's a one card for 30 FPS. So presumably you would have to say, okay, well, if I want 60 FPS, I'm going to need two cards, aren't I? So looking at NVIDIA Team Greenside, we're going to be going with two GTX 970s. Obviously, there's a lot of choices here. A uh, good budget one right now is the EVGA uh, ACX 2.0 with it's with the $330, so you can get two of those for 660, uh, or you can get the gigabyte the gigabyte 970, which is a little bit more money, but they do have better cooling than the EVGA cards, and also some issues have been reported on the ACX cards as far as coil wine is concerned. So if you're looking to avoid the hassle of that possibly being an issue, you might want to spend a little bit more money on the gigabyte card. Um, but you know, I wouldn't really pick one or the other based on a factory overclock, as that's really not that important to me, as I can overclock it myself, and I would hope that most of you out there can as well. So really look around to see which 970 you like the best, uh, and you know, and pick which one suit which suits you and the the case you wind up going with at the end of the day, because uh, the gigabyte card is longer than the EVGA card for sure. So make sure it's going to fit the case that you're going in that you're going to be putting it in if you are going to go uh, with the gigabyte card. Looking at the AMD card, uh, I've chosen the uh, R9 290 from MSI. It's probably the, it's the, uh, definitely the best price right now for this series of graphics cards on the MSI card at $280. You can even save more money if you wanted to go and buy one used on eBay or actually, well, two, I should say, as you're going to need, like, like I said, you're going to need two of these cards really for 1080p 60 FPS at Ultra. You know, if you don't want to have to sacrifice graphics options and start turning things off, you're going to need two graphics cards. So, Looking at the R9 290 at $280, uh, it's cheaper than the 970. You're not going to get those GameWorks features. And if you want to go and find it used on eBay, which you can definitely find them now because it's a little bit older graphics card compared to the 900 series, you can find them pretty cheap on there, like $200 used, uh, probably maybe even a little bit less than this, even new on eBay. So... Good bang for the buck performance, and that's what the AMD build is really all about. It's the you know the for the money build. It's it's really just good, good budget system uh, that's going to run the game. It's going to run the game well, probably just nearly as well as the Nvidia Intel system at you know a at a at a fairly lower price. All right, so now that we got the big stuff out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and round up the build. For memory, we're going to need eight gigabytes uh, according to the recommended specs, and I would say that that's probably all you're really going to need for a gaming build. If you are looking to do more content creation oriented stuff, then you probably want to go for 16 gigabytes. But the Corsair Vengeance at 8 gigabytes at only $68 is a great price right now. Uh, 1600 megahertz out of the box. And I do have experience with this memory. I had the red version 1866 in my old build before I upgraded uh, to the X99 and it was a rock solid performer and didn't have any issues with it. Uh, looking at the power supply, I chose the EVGA Supernova 850 because you're gonna need enough juice if you're gonna if you're gonna be doing two graphics cards with SLI or Crossfire uh, to make sure you have enough juice for those and for overclocking. I went with an 850 watt from EVGA. This is a semi-modular power supply, so it does have some cables already pre-attached, which is gonna help minimize you know with cable clutter and things like that, so you don't have all of those cables on the back and. These are some rock solid power supplies from EVGA. It's the reason I went with an EVGA for my build. They've just had nothing but excellent reviews on the B2 and G2 series uh, out of EVGA. Uh, they're quiet and just really, really efficient. And they use the high quality Japanese capacitor, something that you're not going to get if you try to skimp on the power supply and go for like a Corsair CX series, which might be modular as well. But you're going to be really skimping out on the power supply. And, you know, you, if you get shitty capacitors and they go bad, it can fry your whole entire system. So it's not worth it to me to save 30 bucks, you know, on a power supply to get a cheaper one. I would rather spend, you know, ninety hundred dollars on a on a good quality power supply that I know is going to last me and I know has high quality components on the inside. Now, obviously, you are going to need to cool your CPU, uh, and to that end, I came to the Fantex Dual Tower Heatsink CPU Cooler, which is in a nice black and white aesthetic, which is going to fit in with that MSI board if you decided to go with that. And it's got five stars on Amazon, and it's sixty bucks. Obviously, if you have more money in your budget and you want to go with like an all-in-one cooler, like a Corsair H100i, you can totally do that. As you have those mounting options in the Fantex uh, and through Pro, you're going to have tons of options for mounting water coolers in that bad boy. Um, but if you want to cut down on noise a little bit or save a little bit, save a little bit of money, uh, you could go with something like the Fantex cooler right here. 
As far as the boot drive is concerned, I'm looking at the Sam six, uh, Samsung 850 Evo. I have a 500 gigabyte version of this and it's really, really fast. Uses 3D NAND. Uh, and this is the 250 gigabyte version at $116 and it's gonna just, it's gonna be amazing for just booting up the system super, super quick. And you should have more than enough room left over after, you know, installing Windows and your, your, uh, startup programs to be able to still put the Witcher 3 on there, even though it's requiring 40 gigabytes of hard drive space. And then for more storage beyond that, I went with an HGST 2 terabyte drive, which are only $67 right now. Absolutely amazing deal. And the HGST drives, if you're not familiar, uh, it's actually Hitachi, which these are proven to be the most reliable drives on the market when compared to like Western Digital or Seagate. Uh, HGST has the lowest failure rate of any mechanical hard drive on the market, and that's the reason I, I go with them. Um, I just got two two terabyte HDST drives for my system, and they're just rock solid. I'm using them in RAID uh, so that I have backup of all my information for my YouTube videos and stuff like that. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Don't forget to stick a like on it below if you did. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you have any questions or comments, you can always leave them down below, and I'll try to answer as many of you as possible. And if you want links to anything I discussed in today's video, it'll all be down in the description box that'll help support my channel as well. So use those links and help support me. I would really, really appreciate that. I'll catch you guys next time.